So my name is Ben Morrison. Uh, as Ron said, I'm a solutions architect here at Trilio, and I specifically focus on uh, one of our, our three products, our most recent of our three products, um, Trilio Bolt for Kubernetes. So focusing specifically on the Kubernetes space. So here, getting a little bit into it. So um, what Trilio is at its core is, is a backup and recovery solution, right? So on those day one, day two operations, when you are getting into, um, when you're getting into needing to protect your data, protecting those stateful applications that you have up and running on your multi-cloud and multi-distribution environment, um, it's important to have something to be able to back up that data. Be able to have the confidence to quickly recover that data and to manage it throughout multiple clusters. So um, here's an example. We'll see more later on. I'm going to pull up a, just a brief demo later on to show. Uh, but here would be an example if I was a first time, uh, or not first time, if I was a user logging in um, in our multi-tenant environment, here's something that I would see in our initial dashboard here. And so uh, first and foremost, uh, Trilio as a backup and recovery solution is distribution agnostic. Uh, we actually integrate directly with that upstream Kubernetes API, and that allows us to then, of course, be compatible with any CNCF certified distribution out there. So as long as you're using a distribution that has uh, that CNCF certified capability, this is the sort of thing that you could use. And it's it's really important, right? Because as we just talked a bit about multi-cloud and multi-distribution technologies, that distribution agnostic piece is extremely important. And you'll see that that's a theme here going forward. Um, all throughout. We also have storage agnostic. It's very important to be storage agnostic. Well, um, with all the different distribution providers out there, it's probably not unlikely that you're going to have multiple uh, storage providers that you're using for your clusters. And so having a solution that's storage agnostic is very important. Um, for Trulio specifically, that CSI driver does have to have snapshotting functionality, but there is um, luckily technology is, uh, is uh, come further along in the past year or so when it comes to Kubernetes. And so uh, the majority of those storage uh, CSI drivers have snapshotting at this point. Um, another point to make here is uh, in the agnostic piece, we try to be uh, flexible in terms of where your backups can be stored. Uh, so Trilio is a tool for for copying, basically, and, and, and transporting that backup to a third-party location, being a uh, S3 compatible storage bucket or an NFS. And so in that process, it's important that you have compatibility with S3 or NFS. Um, another example would be sometime uh, in early next year, we're gonna have blob storage as well, but for now, um, S3 you know, was the primary use case that we saw. And of course, you want your solution to be cloud agnostic as well. Uh, is a very big one. If you're going to be distribution agnostic, you're probably going to be uh, using a variety of clouds as well. And so having a solution that can back up those applications and move them from one cloud to another is very, very essential, especially in the age of you know some of these cloud providers getting much larger and providing a lot of benefits on their specific distribution, but not necessarily as many, as many benefits when it comes to multi-cloud and moving uh, workloads from one cloud to another. And so, of course, with that cloud agnostic piece, public and uh, on-prem uh, uh, clouds would be relevant here. And then the last piece that you want in a backup and restore uh, solution is going to be uh, to be package management agnostic. Now, this one might seem a little different than the other three. The other three might be a little more expected here. But um, one of our design criteria when moving forward with Trilio was, was making sure that users um, could back up their applications and their workloads however they wanted to. And so as part of our multi-tenancy, you could be any sort of engineer, any sort of user coming in and backing up only your workloads or maybe a variety of workloads. It could be customized to whatever you want it to be. So for example, me logging in as, let's say, a DevOps engineer wanting to back up some applications and workloads that I deployed via Helm chart. I can do that with Trilio. All I have to do is select the actual Helm chart I used to back up my, or excuse me, used to deploy my application. And then Trilio will find all the resources associated with that Helm chart, including the Helm chart itself and all revisions of that Helm chart, and then back it up 
to that third party uh, S3 or NFS, and then have it ready to go for restores into another cluster if needed. And the same thing is relevant for, um, for operators. If you use an operator to manage your workloads, Trilio can, you can select an operator and Trilio will automatically find all objects uh, data and metadata associated with that operator, as well as the custom resources associated with that operator, back them all up and easily be able to restore them into another cluster entirely. And then lastly, of course, labels would be another example. We know labels is the de facto for organization and orchestration within Kubernetes. And so um, you can select simply a label, multiple labels, or an entire namespace to back up. And so, as you can see from this theme here, agnostic and flexibility and customization is really what you want out of a backup re recovery solution. And so, that's uh, going to be the theme of what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. And just to paint the full picture here for um, what a tool like Trilio could do in terms of backup and recovery, uh, you have Kubernetes Cluster 1 here. Let's say um, Kubernetes Cluster 1 is an upstream cluster. Let's say it's, it's no distribution, just an upstream cluster. And here in that top block there, you have your pods, PBs, secrets, config maps, which all make up your application. Your application has multiple objects, right? It has pieces of metadata and persistent volumes. And so if you have Trilio installed onto or deployed onto that Kubernetes cluster one, Trilio can then back up all those objects deployed however they were deployed, home charter operator, and then back them up to the NFS or S3 target. From there, then you can restore all of those workloads exactly as they were into that same Kubernetes cluster, uh, one, into the same namespace, uh, two, you can, you can um, restore into an entirely different namespace, and then your third option is you could also deploy those workloads exactly as they were into an entire entirely other cluster, that Kubernetes cluster 2. And so let's say to here that Kubernetes cluster 2 is an RKE cluster. Let's say it is uh, it's RKE and Kubernetes cluster 1 is just upstream Kubernetes. Even though these are two different distributions, they could be using different components such as different storage classes or different services. And from there, you can, you can actually do transforms in Trilio to make sure that that application in cluster one using storage class one, let's say, successfully uses uh, the RKE Longhorn storage class when that restore occurs. So you can customize those components before the application is even deployed into your new Kubernetes cluster. And so hopefully when we go along, we'll uh, have a little more clarity on that one as well. So some of the use case evolution that we were talking about today. Um, so day zero, obviously, you're focusing mostly on that app mobility and those test and dev environments. You're getting started with Kubernetes and your Kubernetes clusters, and you're not quite in production, and you need to figure out more of the CI CD pipeline and how you're going to go about deploying and managing all of your applications. On day one, once that uh, for initial process has been completed, this is where you want to start looking at that backup and recovery in piece. You also want to look at, of course, ransomware and observability. It's a common one to look at, uh, and also ransomware. And um, for ransomware, you know, you're going to have your cybersecurity solutions to protect your clusters on the front end. But I want to talk a little bit about ransomware in terms of backup and recovery, because disaster recovery, as we see on day two, once you have your backup and recovery solution, you want to start making a disaster recovery plan. A ransomware attack or, or a malware attack uh, for some, from some malicious actor is going to be an example of a, of a disaster that you have in your environments. And so although you might not always think of backup and recovery as a cybersecurity solution, although we are not a cybersecurity solution, it's a part of that process. It's a part of that recovery, a part of that uh, plan B in case you have to restore yourself from an attack. And so both great examples on day one, day two, of what you need to think about when it comes to cybersecurity and ransomware and having that disaster recovery plan ready to go. So then one more example I want to talk about, especially when we're talking about multi-cloud, uh, multi-distribution. Oh, let me go back there. Uh, talking about core to edge to cloud uh, transferability of workloads. And so obviously uh, this is the big topic today that people are focusing on, especially when you talk about multi-cloud, uh, they're probably doing some sort of computing on the edge. And this is something that Kubernetes can do very, very well. 
because of customizing the environments however you want. And so to me, the use case of, of Trilio and, and being able to migrate these workloads from one to another or back them up from one to another is really important when it comes to edge computing. Um, there's two different things I want to talk about. One would be uh, we have um, a non-proprietary, excuse me, a proprietary process called um, incremental backups, where you essentially can do backups of your data, but only the changes in data that have occurred between some length of time when the last backup was taken. So let me say that one again. So if you have, uh, for example, an edge uh, K3S cluster that you are wanting to do a backup of every single day. You can do a backup on day one, and on day one, you'll have a full backup of all the workloads or the entire cluster or whatever you want to do uh, of that K3S cluster. On day two, because of this incremental backup component, Trilio can actually look at the data from day one and look at the data from day two, compare the two, and see the differences in data that have occurred on that K3S cluster. From there, only the differences in data on that K3S cluster that have occurred that you want backed up will be backed up. And the importance of this, especially with edge computing, is that throughput across your network. How many, I mean, think about if you're, if you're someone who's using edge uh, and currently, I'm curious what your network connectivity is like, if it's very stable, if it's a little less stable at times. Um, as a solutions architect, I, got, I get a lot of network related questions when it comes to edge computing. And uh, this is an example of how Trilio can easily back up those K3S workloads, even if you have poor network connectivity, essentially. If you don't have any connection at all, truly will wait until that connection is stable and enough for that throughput to go through and then be able to send it through. And you also have less throughput, so less workload on your network itself. Uh, and so then from there, that's a great example of that easiness. And the second piece I want to talk about is the granularity. Um, I talked a bit before about all the different ways you can back up your workloads. And so, um, Along with getting very granular with those backups, you can choose exactly want, what you want to back up or, or you can back up the entire cluster itself. You can also get very, very granular on what you want to restore. So when it comes to these K3S clusters, they're much smaller clusters because they're on the edge. You want to get very granular about what you're restoring when it comes to a backup solution. Maybe you backed up an entire application in your core cluster, in that bottom right core RKE cluster. And, and that's stored in the AWS cloud there, and you want to restore components of that workload, maybe 50% of that workload in data, um, or 50% of the application, just talking in terms here, um, into that K3S cluster. You don't want to restore the entire application because the K3S cluster can't handle that. With a, a solution like Trilio, you can get very granular on that end as well. You can easily restore um, um, at a very granular level, pick and choose what you want to bring into that K3S cluster. So from there, I'll go ahead and switch over to a quick demo here. Um, I just want to show a little bit of um, what this multi-cluster management component is like. And I'm checking time here to make sure I don't go over. I know Ron will uh, let me know if I stretch a little over on time here. But here's just an example of, um, of Trilio itself when it comes to uh, a backup and recovery tool that can fit a lot of these challenges that we just talked about. So as you just saw, I logged in with my uh, uh, cube config file. Um, however, you can configure your instances of Trilio to log in with any OIDC provider you want, or LDAP if you wish. So for example, this GKE cluster, I could log in with Google sign-on if I wanted to. So here you can see an example of this multi-cloud component. I have two different clusters here, Rancher and uh, GKE. Rancher is running on AWS, GKE is running on GCP. So entirely different clouds, different uh, distributions, and I'm able to manage both of them right here in one pane of glass. Um, talking about the GKE cluster here, you can see in the middle is an example of what we call application discovery. Uh, here you can easily see what is backed up successfully, which would be this green WordPress namespace here, and what is not protected, which would be any of the white um, non-colored namespaces here. I can even get very granular to the um, application level and look at individual labels. So here's the individual label of that WordPress application, looking at either list view or honeycomb. If there, if there was a Helm or operator deployed here, I would see that same Honeycomb instance here. And I can even get down to a very granular object level. From there, I just want to also show quickly here, we can hop back over to the Rancher cluster, because why not? 
Uh, same sort of thing here in terms of uh, discovery of that namespace. The green backup namespace successfully backed up. The others are not. You can see a summary of those backups in the uh, upper right here. And now here's an example of one of those namespace backups that we had occurred here. So looking at a status log, I can see the status log of this backup and how it occurred. Um, looks like it was a MySQL application, MySQL PV that was backed up here and only took, looks like three minutes to complete. Um, looking into the granularity then as well, Again, I can get a very granular scene, every piece of metadata that was backed up in this uh, backup QCOW2 process. So again, getting very, very granular. If I did want to start a backup, for example, just using a namespace as an example, uh, I, I do these backups based on a backup plan. So it's essentially the blueprint of your backup plan or your backup itself. And uh, just showing some of how this process works, you can select the target, that S3 or NFS, if you wish to back up to. We have that encryption secret. You can have your backups encrypted at the backup plan level. Any hooks you might need, uh, any, any scheduling policies for that full and incremental backup like we talked about, and any retention policies to, to organize how many backups you have at any given time, essentially. I also want to just take a look here at this resource selector. So here in this resource selector is where I can get very granular again, uh, selecting individual labels if I wish to, uh, or maybe labels that reside outside of this namespace. So, so backing up a namespace along with labels in other parts of the cluster. So again, just getting very, very granular, as well as excluding certain resources if I wish. I can select this entire namespace and then say back up this whole namespace except XYZ label. One last uh, piece I want to show here in terms of a restore. Uh, we do just have this quick example of a restore that occurred of this, of this um, WordPress application. And so here, again, very, very similar to the backup. I can see these logs happening, uh, this resource process happening only, uh, uh, taking only a few minutes to complete. I can see a bit of a summary, and I can see a very granular look at that metadata as well. So with that, I'll go ahead and uh, close out here. I know I'm about at my time. And so I want to thank everyone for, for listening to this bit today on AngelBeat. I really appreciate the, the attendance and the attentiveness. And so uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, my, my email is not listed here, but my email is ben.morrison at trilio.io. If anyone wishes to reach out to me directly, I'm happy to answer any questions. 